Today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting question. And that is, what would be a function f that when differentiated yields the inverse of that very function f? So that sets up our differential equation that the derivative of f equals the inverse of f. And what kind of function would work here? Clearly an exponential function isn't going to cut it because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, whereas the inverse is the natural logarithm of x. Similarly, trigonometric functions aren't going to cut it either, like sine of x when you differentiate it. You get the cosine of x, which is not the inverse sine function. So I could try a power function. So let's try f of x of the form y equal to alpha times x to the beta, where alpha and beta could be complex numbers. And this is, of course, a very common method of solving differential equations, just checking out what kind of function, what kind of structure would actually satisfy the differential equation. So let's take this function and differentiate it. We get the derivative of y with respect to x equal to alpha times beta times x to the beta minus 1. And this is supposed to be equal to the inverse function. So what exactly would be the inverse? For that, I'm given y in terms of x, so I'll solve for x in terms of y. We have y by alpha equal to x to the beta, which implies that x equals y to the 1 by beta times alpha to the negative 1 by beta. And the inverse function expressed as a function of x would be x to the 1 by beta times alpha to the negative 1 by beta. Okay, cool. And we're supposed to have the derivative equal to the inverse, which means we have this equation at hand. We have alpha times beta times x to the beta minus 1 equal to alpha to the negative 1 by beta times x to the 1 by beta. Notice that both the left and the right hand sides of our equation are power functions. And the only way for two power functions to be equal is if the exponents and the coefficients are equal. So on comparing the exponents, we have the equation beta minus 1 equals 1 by beta. And for the coefficients, we have alpha times beta equal to alpha to the negative 1 by beta. So that means we have two equations in two unknowns, alpha and beta, that we can now solve. So taking the first equation, beta minus 1 equal to 1 by beta, and expanding using beta, we have beta squared minus beta equal to 1, which implies that beta squared minus beta minus 1 equals 0. And now it's time for our boy the quadratic formula to shine. We have beta equal to 1 plus or minus 1 minus, no, two negatives canceling out. We have positive 4 by 2. So that means we have 1 plus root 5 by 2, or 1 minus root 5 by 2. And the second value here can be written in terms of the first value as 1 minus 1 plus root 5 by 2, which we recognize as the golden ratio. So we have beta equal to phi or beta equal to 1 minus phi. Now for the possible values of the alpha parameter, we take the second one of our equations and expand using alpha to the 1 by beta so that we have alpha to the 1 plus 1 by beta on the left times beta equal to 1. And what exactly is 1 plus 1 by beta? Recall that the first equation was beta minus 1 equal to 1 by beta, which means that beta equals 1 plus 1 by beta. And this means that we have alpha to the beta times beta equal to 1, which further implies that alpha to the beta equals 1 by beta. And what exactly is 1 by beta? Well, that's just beta minus 1. So that means we have, wait a minute, I can write this as alpha equal to 1 by beta to the 1 by beta, right? and 1 by beta is just beta minus 1. So this implies that alpha equals beta minus 1 to the beta minus 1, and that means I have two 
possible values of alpha as well. For beta equal to phi, we have alpha equal to phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1, and for beta equal to the other value was 1 minus phi, we have alpha equal to 1 minus phi minus 1 gives us negative phi, and we have the same thing up here. And notice that the second one of these alpha values is indeed a complex number. We have a negative number raised to an irrational exponent. So there are a couple of functions that solve the differential equation. One of them is f of x equal to phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 times x to the phi, and the other is negative phi to the negative phi times x to the 1 minus phi. And the appearance of the golden ratio here is beautiful, but it's not just beautiful. It almost seems like a necessity given the nature of our problem. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The problem was to find a function f such that the derivative equals the inverse function. And the golden ratio helps a lot here with the algebra. And let me show you that by verifying one of these solutions. So for the function defined this way, we have the derivative equal to phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 times phi times x to the phi minus 1. And the inverse function, if I recall correctly, was defined as x by alpha, which is now phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1. And the whole thing was raised to the 1 by beta, which is now, of course, 1 by phi. And these two don't look equal, but they will once I play around with the golden ratio. So recall that phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals 0. So expanding the whole thing by 1 by phi gives me phi minus 1 minus 1 by phi equal to 0. And because we have phi minus 1s everywhere, we could make use of the fact that phi minus 1 equals 1 by phi. Okay, so applying this knowledge to the derivative equation, we have the derivative equal to 1 by phi to the 1 by phi times x times phi, that is, times x to the 1 by phi. Okay, so that gives me phi to the negative 1 by phi. But wait, there's another phi being multiplied, so that would be phi minus 1 by phi times x to the 1 by phi. So that's the derivative. And now for the inverse function, we have the inverse function defined as x to the 1 by phi divided by phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 times 1 by phi on expanding the exponent. So we have 1 by phi minus 1 to the 1 minus 1 by phi times x to the 1 by phi. Okay, cool. And phi minus 1 is again just 1 by phi, so we have 1 by 1 by phi to the 1 minus 1 by phi. And this thing is being multiplied by x to the 1 by phi. So just expanding by the phi term in the basement of that fraction, we have the inverse function equal to phi to the 1 minus 1 by phi times x to the 1 by phi, which is exactly what the derivative is to. That was extremely cool. And you can verify the second solution as an exercise. Yeah, that's left as an exercise to the viewer. Also, let me know in the comments section if you find any more solutions to this, to this differential equation. But my guess is these are the only two that would work. But that's just my guess. Let me know in the comments section if you find any more. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.